Hi, this is Clint Forbert from the sales team at Rust Sound, and I'm going to walk you through installing the Rust Sound Voice Play system. The Voice Play system consists of two components the VKP1, which is an amplified keypad with Alexa built in, and we can connect a variety of sources from our phones or some native sources built in. The power supply for this is called the VPS2, and that has the capability of powering up to two VKP1 keypads. We're going to install them both. I'm going to show you a couple different examples. Now, the VKP1 keypad needs to be connected to the power supply, and it only needs two conductors. So we can generally use whatever has been pre-wired into the wall. Maybe it's a 16-2 speaker wire or 16-4 that used to go to a volume control. Maybe it's a category cable that used to go to a keypad. But really, we only need to be able to get power to it because it's its own amplifier and it's its own source. So in the first example, we're going to look at a situation where we have a Category 5 cable that's already been pulled to the keypad. So here you'll see that we have our keypad. And if we roll it over, you'll see that there are some Phoenix terminal strips on the back. These are removable, and they're also labeled for polarity and speaker. We can attach our wires to these simply using a small flathead screwdriver. So let's pull the wires out of the box and see what we're dealing with here. Got a couple of speaker wires. Looks like these are going to some outdoor speakers. This is direct burial rated wire. And here's that CAT5E that we talked about earlier. Now, since I only need two conductors of this, I'm going to twist up the connectors and make this into a large two conductor cable. We're gonna to wanna to strip the speaker wires around 3 sixteenths of an inch. Make sure you twist them tight so there's no stray conductors. And we're gonna do the same thing with our category five cable. Here I took four of the conductors, in this case, the blue and green pairs, tied them all together and the brown and orange pairs are gonna be my positive. So I'm gonna twist them together, trim them to fit. Making sure they're good and twisted. And we wanna make sure that there's not too much copper so there's no uninsulated wire hanging out of the end of the contact strip. It's easy to install the terminals because we can pull them out of the keypad. So make sure we have the polarity correct. This is positive. And then we'll snug down the screw. Nice and tight. So let's install the negative. Again, snugging it down. And we'll want to make sure to remember how we configured the wires in here for back at the power supply so we get everything correct. Let's move on to the speaker wires. Again, these are already trimmed, twisted, about 3 sixteenths of an inch. Make sure there's no stray conductors. And then we'll put them on the terminal strip. Strip is labeled for both left and right speakers and identifies positive and negative for each. Insert the wires in the hole, snug them down, and that's all there is to it. First speaker, now let's do the second speaker. Now we're ready to plug the keypad in and install it into the wall. First the power supply. And now the speakers. Feed the wires back into the wall and we'll screw it home. Uses a standard Decora type faceplate and is available both in white and black. Nice and straight. Screw it in, and we're all done. For our next example, let's replace a traditional volume control in the wall with a Rust Sound VKP1 keypad. In this case, we'll be using the 16.4 that comes from the rack in order to power it up, and we'll connect the speakers. So again, we have our VKP1, 
And inside the box, here's a 16.4. This one would have been coming from the amplifier when there was a volume control here. And one going to the speakers. I've already trimmed these and tied them off. In the case of the power supply, you can see that I just used two conductors, red and black, and the white and green will remain unused. Now we're going to add the Phoenix terminals to each of these wires. And snug down the screws. Okay, power's done. Let's do the speakers. Again, we're going to make sure that there's no stray conductors, and we're going to insert the wires into the terminal block. Again, labeled by speaker and speaker polarity. We'll start with the right positive and snug it down. Now the negative. Let's move on to the left speaker. Left negative, that's the green. And the positive for the left speaker. Let's plug them into the VKP1. First speakers. There's the power. And into the wall it goes. Perfect. Now, let's install the power supply. Here's the VPS2. Small black box. Power indicator, fault indicators for both of the power supplies for the two keypads. On the back, again, receptacles for the Phoenix terminals and a standard plug-in. Some key slots for mounting it on a board or a stud. And here's the wires coming from our keypads. Number one, we had CAD5. I remembered the polarity and I put the Phoenix on, so that's ready to go. And here's the speaker wire coming from the one that we just installed. Again, tied the green and white back. We're not using them. No straight conductors. And let's put the last terminal on. Again, mark for polarity. Start with the negative. Tighten it. And the positive. No, oh, straight conductor. And we'll snug it down. Those are ready to go. So now we'll just insert the Phoenix terminals into the back of the power supply. Through the magic of editing, here's our power supply to the wall. When we plug it in, you can see that the power indicator lights up green and the fault indicators are cleared. We don't have anything installed yet. Now let's install our keypads. No fault. And no fault there either. Our keypads should be powered up. Here's a quick tip to make it easier for mounting the power supply or any device that uses the key slots on the back. So in this case, I want to mount the power supply onto this stud. Got the key slots in the back, fit standard drywall screws. Now I've tried using templates and rulers and lots of different ways to get this right. And this may be pretty rudimentary to you watching, but this was a life changer for me. And add a strip of blue taint, painter's tape right over the key slots, push them down, and mark where the finished stud should go. There it is. Now I'm going to peel off the tape. I'm going to place it onto the surface that I want to mount the power supply to. Perfect. Now the tape's stuck on. Let's drill in a couple of screws. There's one. And one more. Now I'm going to peel off the tape. A 
align the screws to the key slots after I fumble around for 30 seconds. There we go. Plug in the connections. And finally the power. And we're all set. Now that we've connected the power supply, let's go check on our VKP1 keypads. And apply power. Power light turns on. Good, it's getting power. It's booting up. And the red indicator light showing that the Alexa microphone is disabled. Thanks for watching.